What up, guys? Your boy Quake. We're back with a brand new episode of the Diverse Mentality Podcast, number 74. I got my co host. Yes, sir. Vito in the house. Wait, the mic, man. Oh, Come shit. on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> my man. Yeah, this dude. I'm about I'm, to li- feeling- I'm leaving that in, by the way, because that was. <laughs> Leave that shit in. Let people yeah, laugh at me a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that was. How do you not get your mic? <laughs> I did, forgot all about the mic, bro. <laughs> I was like, I'm tired of shit today, man. We all are, yeah, today. Yeah, I got a runny nose. I went to the motor track at Audi. Um, I got three hours of sleep. Woke up at five. Damn. Went um, to our sister's. We went. We got there at seven thirty in the morning. That shit was fun. Yeah, you guys fun. were there pretty fucking early. We were the first ones there, actually. <laughs> Drive some R R eights. Nah, I wish. <laughs> yeah, I wish too. Bunch of RS fives. That it, it's good. The company lended the cars, so we didn't have to use our own cars or ruin them. So. Yeah, I never been in one of those, but I always wanted to be in one of those. Yeah, so fun as fuck. I heard that was fun. Yeah, I posted on my Instagram. Big ass helmet. I got a big ass head, so my helmet was huge. Yeah, they had like. That. They had like extra large. I was like, I need this. <laughs> it wasn't fitting. None of those other ones were fucking fitting my head. Too tight. Yeah, them bitches. And it's hot, dude. Because that's the thing, thing, man. Yeah, it's. I think. It's and you gotta thing. wear like with the helmet some underneath that. You don't like, have to, but I did because I don't trust people's heads and shit dirty as hell. Oh, that's what it is. For yeah, I, I put the white. Yeah, I put the white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes it even hotter. Man. It is. It's yeah. hundred degrees outside. Man. Yeah. No, it wasn't too bad today though. That's the good thing. I don't know. Today was just no. In the morning, horrible, up man. until because we woke up early in the morning, so it wasn't bad in the morning. By the time it hit twelve o'clock, it was yeah, bad. in the morning it's not too bad. You're right. You're right. So it wasn't bad. But you saw we hit a, yeah, uh, we hit a record high in July. I mean, the world's ending. So, come on, man. It is, yeah. The global warming. We're fucking up this planet. Please be over. So enjoy while you can. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> shit. Uh, Dr. Dre's daughter, an update on her. Um, she's been getting more interviews and she's been taking them. And she recently started a GoFundMe. Wow. So if you don't know what a GoFundMe is, it's basically people who are struggling. Um, they'll ask, you know, they're in a dire situation where they need help. They'll ask people to donate, which is... A lot of these that I see, I could go on a whole rant about this, but I'm going to chill. A lot of these that I see on GoFundMe are people needing like medical help. And it's kind of fucked up, especially in America, that we need people have to donate to help people with medical. And we should have like healthcare as a human right, period. So a lot of people that I see on there, it's sad. They got like cancer or they got something serious where they just can't afford it. They don't have health insurance. And they ask people for help. A lot of people help. Thankfully, there's good people in the world who donate. Um, and yeah, so Dr. Dre's daughter uh, started one. And let's go over the article. Uh, Dr. Dre's estranged daughter, Latanya Young, has been st- staying in the public spotlight in recent months thanks to her candid interviews about her famous father. Young says Beast by Dre mogul is worth an estimated $800 million. I don't know why they mentioned that because that's half of that now because of the divorce. Cut off her uh, financially in January. And she was, she's been living out of her car, working for DoorDash, unable to reach Dr. Dre directly. Uh, now the 38-year-old mother of four has decided to take matters into her own hands by launching a GoFundMe campaign to help get her back on her feet. To help get back on her feet. Uh, she said, I, I think GoFundMe campaigns are for people in desperate situations. And I'm in a desperate situation, she said to the Daily Mail. I really don't want to accept any handouts, but I appreciate anything that is offered. I have worked all my life and I know how to work for money, but I am in a difficult place right now. I believe in investing in your kids. That's what I want to do for my kids. So they are never in a position like I am right now. Young isn't giving up hope. She'll one day reunite with Dr. Dre adding, I know my dad is a busy man, but I hope he will see it and reach back out to me on a father daughter level. So her GoFundMe has a $50,000 goal. She's raised so far as of the making of this video, $3,903 out of that $50,000. Okay. And the top donator is somebody who's anonymous, $200. It would be crazy if Dr. Dre donated anonymously. That would be funny. Gives a full amount. Yeah, that would be crazy. Um, so a lot of people, when they donate to, they've been leaving their comments on here, which is kind of crazy. Um just people going against Dr. Dre saying, what a piece of shit father you have. I'm sorry that you will have to answer to God in the next life. His life won't be so easy then. This guy is like, yo, I just gave you $5 just to let you know this is not cool. Get off your ass. Uh, you're fully grown. Don't have kids if you can't take care without your dad. Dad was helping. 
you till you talk to the media. So this guy donated five dollars just to talk shit. <laughs> what is wrong with people, man? People are crazy. Um, yeah, I mean, I understand the GoFundMe. I understand the situation she's in, but at the end of the day, this is Dr. Dre's daughter. I, I personally, I'm not d- donating to this. This is Dr. Dre's. This is a eight hundred million dollar, four hundred million dollar man's daughter. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, I wouldn't donate to this. There are people that actually need it who don't have a four hundred million dollar dad. And why did she start this up? All of a sudden, like now, because she's getting mm-hmm. media coverage now. Yeah, so it's gonna be easy to get the money. Yeah, and probably. Which I mean, I understand her situation, but it's like, mm-hmm. you know, I don't, I don't think people shouldn't donate to this just because. I mean, I, why am I, why am I telling people what to do with their money? I don't give a fuck. You do whatever you want. But I'm just saying, yeah, donating you know. to this when there's people actually out there that actually need the money, like they're they don't have a Dr. Dre father. Yeah, exactly. Um, they need it way oh, more than her. That. Yeah, there's people on here, I'm sure, that I could find millions of ones. Um, let's see, for individuals, let's just go to medical. I just want to see, because medical is usually the big ones. Um, yeah, life-saving medical expenses for somebody. Like, there's a lot of these. Uh, Spencer family, there's a lot of a lot of these donations. Uh, one guy lost his arm, he needs medical bills. All kinds of stuff, like serious things that people need. And these people are, don't have a famous father that's worth $400 million. They have no connections, nothing. They're relying solely on this, which is fucked up. Like I said, in America, we should have medical rights. We should be taken care of. Our cousins in Germany, which is crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, one of them got injured, went straight to the hospital, took care of him, nothing. Didn't pay a single penny. This is in Germany? Germany. With our Uncle Sefer? No, I'm not going to say the names or anything, but yeah. it was, uh, you know, our, yeah. Yeah, okay. I don't think I heard his story. The, the kids. Not, oh, not, yeah, 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 yeah. I got you, got yeah. you. Yeah, so. That's how Germany works, though, I believe. Yeah, he went in there, yeah. he had stitches. But I did hear a thing that in the United States, if you if you go to the emergency room and you're dying, they try, I guess, how do I say this? They try to help you, treat you, like they have to. I don't know if they have to, though, because Young, Young and Ace got shot. That even take the bullets out of him because he didn't. I mean, I I guess I don't know, man. This is just what I heard, but I guess it just depends on the situation too. But if you're like, you know, I don't know. No, I would hope they would take care of you. Yeah, they take care of you, and if you can't pay the bill, then they try to. I think the hospital tries to get funding from someone to try to take care of this bill, or they just sometimes they just say, "Hey, you don't need to pay it." I was told and you then could, sometimes they just slap you with a big ass bill. Yeah, I was told you can just ignore it completely. Yeah. You don't have to pay the bill. You can just ignore it. That's what I was told. I don't know. <laughs> I had a friend that had like an $8,000 bill. Yeah. And he's just like, dude, I can't afford this. He was just telling the lady, like, I can't afford this. I can't do this. Yeah. Which and you then can, they just like. Yeah. What, they, you, what you can do too is you can ask to have the bill broken down to you, like everything that was charged. Mm-hmm. They'll charge like $100 for Kleenex. So like you can say, remove this, remove this, remove this, and they'll remove it. Yeah, if it's like a crazy thing, like like a hundred dollars for a fucking box of Kleenex, so yeah. So shout out to Dr. Dre's daughter. Hope she um, yeah, man, you know, gets in a better situation. Hopefully, what's more important is the relationship between Dr. Dre and his daughter. Hopefully, that mends and they get back together, and they're back to being a family again. Because right. that's the worst part of all of this. The money thing you can get out of situations like this, but family situations, Definitely. you know, it could last forever. That that stuff not. What you want, so I hope he reaches out to her. Yeah, uh, Charlemagne, uh, the guy who still has to suck Six Nine's dick, huh. who still hasn't yet, by the way, because he said whenever Six Nine becomes free, a free person, he will suck his dick. He said, "Oh shit!" So Six Nine is free as a bird right now, by the way. Charlemagne, get, get ready. Yeah, gotta get on your knees, brother. <laughs> get on your knees. Get on open your wide. <laughs> so Charlemagne. The reason why I'm mentioning Charlemagne is because he says <laughs> Charlemagne. Um, any rapper can beat Eminem in a versus, Get including f- Six Nine. Fuck out of here, man! Which is just a bait to Eminem, so Eminem can talk shit about him on his album. That's oh, really man. what it is. Yeah, man. I think Charlemagne just has a disdain for Eminem for whatever reason, um, which is stupid. I mean, we all know Eminem is a whole different caliber of artist. Yeah, man. I know what it, what his. I kind of understand what his point is in the video, which I'm about to play for you guys right now, but. It still doesn't make sense at the end of the day. He basically, in the video, he says, he says, like, Eminem's music, the kids don't really fuck with it like that. Like, 
if 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 Six Nine plays that Gooba track, which is his biggest track, and then Eminem plays like what Clean Out My Closet, like the the vibe wouldn't match. I mean, first off, you would never match Six Nine and Eminem. That just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So we, there's so why even have the discussion in the first yeah. place? But he's basically saying the kids don't really fuck with Eminem like that, so the music wouldn't be nobody would really turn up to that. But it's not just kids in the audience. That's the thing, Charlemagne. It wouldn't exactly. just be fucking kids in the audience, man. Look at the locks versus uh, Dipset. They're grown adults. Yeah, in the audience, so they know what the fuck what's playing. So let's let's listen what Charlamagne said. What about Eminem and, and Jay Z? M gets washed. M gets washed in any verses, bro. Damn, y'all gonna stop it. Y'all gonna stop this. And I mean, <laughs> I, I, I like Renegade. In I any I, I verses, to, uh, any not any verses, bro. Any, I mean any against any. M don't have the songs like that. M can rap, and we like yeah, M but as not a rapper. Any verses, there are rappers that are worse than Eminem. Like against Way six worse. yeah, nine, but they got better songs. You think Future six, nine, washes Eminem in a verse. You think 6ix9ine beats Eminem in a versus? <laughs> depending on the generation. You are crazy motherfucker. <laughs> you are depending wild. On, depending no, on right. the generation. You are wild. Yo. M, don't got no, yo, M don't got nothing that slap like gummo to these kids. Yo, Young Thug washes Eminem in a versus. I, I seen know, you bro. wild out to pick up the phone, show. I, I seen you know, lose your man. mind to pick up the phone. <laughs> Oh, what about Emma? So I, I see what he's saying, but the audience, every time I've seen, well, how many times has it been in person versus uh, with the actual audience there? I don't remember how many times that's happened, but at least for the locks and dipset, it was mainly older people. Right. It wasn't young. I didn't see, I don't know. I didn't really look at the crowd that well, but a lot of, a lot of his older people. How do, I, let me, let me figure this out. Cause how do, how do they determine who wins? In, in versus, versus there is no official winner. So how? Just by the crowd's it's reaction? It's just fans. You know, the fans decide at the end of the day. But it's not like official. Like, there isn't like a yeah. scorecard where the people right. there are saying, hey, this, this. It's fans just at the end of the day. Whatever you see trending on Twitter that night, the better the better person oh, trends. Oh, so shit like that. Yeah, it's like fans just deciding. So Eminem's, stand, Eminem's fan group is huge. So that, that yeah, is Yeah, man. That... I, I understand what he's saying. Though. Yeah, he's saying yeah, I, 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 newer I generation, they don't really fuck with Eminem. Which right. is still false. I know a lot of younger people who fuck with Eminem still. It might not be to the level that they used to, but Eminem's been around for so damn long that of course you're going to run into people that don't. That it's not. Mm -hmm. He's not as relevant as he is back in 2000. And in 2000, you couldn't escape that fucking guy. That guy no was way. that guy that was hip hop at that moment. Period. There's nobody denying that. 1.8 million nice. copies sold first week. Diamond twice back to back. Million copies first week back to back, like you can't it was played all over the place. Yeah, that was just that was dominant at that time. Um, but I understand what he's saying. He's saying like Young Thug, if you were to go, but that this theory, this whole conversation doesn't make any fucking sense because Young Thug would never go up against Eminem. That just doesn't make any sense. The music doesn't match. Yeah, you gotta have some sort of music matching so that if Eminem plays, I don't know, Eminem plays uh, Lose Yourself, like somebody has to match that record and play something similar to that. That's usually how it goes in a versus. At least that's the way I see it. That's why when Drake goes there, they would like Kanye West to be there because Kanye and Drake, they have records that match each other. You know, or, yeah. Con or Drake and Chris Brown, they can something like that. Yeah, yeah, that matches more. You would not want Eminem and Six Nine. That just doesn't make any fucking sense. Right. Nobody would even. That would be the most watched versus I think of all time. Easily, I would watch that in a heartbeat. Yeah. Uh, that would be interesting. That, that would probably freeze the TV. Let's yeah, say. that that would be interesting to watch. But would it be interesting musically? Hell no. Nobody would watch. Like nobody. I, I nah. Like if 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 <laughs> if six nine somehow got trending and went more popular than Eminem at that night, that would have been the fucking stupidest shit ever. God damn, I can't even imagine. I don't, yeah. don't want to think about that. So Charlemagne, you got to worry about sucking six nine's dick first. Because, <laughs> yeah, you you <laughs> promised you would suck it. After he got free, so you still haven't delivered on that promise. I'm surprised Six Nine hasn't said shit about it. I think he did. I don't know if he did. I haven't kept track of it, but um, I think Charlemagne's just saying this for to get Eminem to react to the music. Yeah, hundred percent. One last time for Charlemagne. Yeah, <laughs> that's just how long it takes to hit my fucking radar. I'm so far away. <laughs> I love Eminem when he responds. <laughs> I was listening to Kamikaze. I love that album. That was really good. Man. Kamikaze is a good fucking album. That Fall record is my favorite too. So one I last like time when, for Charlemagne. I like when Eminem replies. To things. Yeah, that's why I like. I want Kamikaze too. So that's why he wants to say some shit. Exactly. Like that. I think. I think. Yeah. I think the more outlandish shit people say, yeah. the more Eminem gets angrier, 
and then the music comes out where it's just like yeah which i like deep, deep down inside everybody fucking loves that yeah yeah so anyways yeah that's charlemagne for you guys as usual but his the only reason this caught wind is because charlemagne has a, a voice in hip-hop and you know people people listen to what the fuck he Hell says yeah so Tory Lane. So as you got as I mentioned the situation when the baby went out, he brought out Tory Lane's. Megan the Stallion performed before Tory Lane's did. And because Tory Lane's has uh protection order against him um from Megan the Stallion's lawyers and team, he can't be around Megan the Stallion within a certain amount of distance. He has to be away okay. from her. So he did break that, by the way, which people were expecting that to happen. So let's go over the article. Uh, a judge has reportedly decided Tory Lanez violated the protection order, banning him from being within a hundred yards of Megan the stallion. When he appeared at rolling loud Miami last month, according to TMZ prosecutors have filed a motion to hold the embattled rapper in contempt of court for violating the restraining order that was issued last October. Uh, Lanes was hit with a felony assault charge for allegedly shooting Megan the stallion in July of 2020, sources say prosecutors have filed legal docs asking the judge to either revoke or increase his bail. Prosecutors believe Lanes and the scat collaborated. The baby attempted to rush the stage while Megan the Stallion was performing, but a source close to Lanes' team reportedly said he never got physically close to her or even saw her at the festival. Uh, hearing on the contempt motion is set for Thursday, August 19th. So on that day, we'll find out if Tor Lanes actually gets locked up for this. Uh, Lanes was brought out as a surprise guest. Yeah, as the baby, and then obviously the baby did his homophobic comments, and then we all know the story after that. But um, what is going on with this case? Why does it keep getting pushed back? Um, Lanes pleaded not guilty to two felony charges last November. Um, what, what what's going on with this case? I keep hearing about this fucking case over and over and over again. There hasn't been nothing that's been going on. I mean, Tory Lanes just sold a million dollars worth of copies off the nft album so he's doing great megan the stallion is killing it with her music she just did a track with lizzo that record's blowing up um yep. she keeps twerking so there's a lot of shit that um like that's going on so why hasn't tori like, what's going on with this case i hate like i said i hate america's judicial system it takes forever like tori like nipsey hustles murderer by the way happy birthday nipsey hustle yeah uh, today's his birthday. birthday rest in peace but his case um is still there's nothing like the guy hasn't been prosecuted yet. It's taken forever. Like, they need to go through trial. Like, what's taking fucking forever, man? Yeah, I don't get it's about, it. It's works. about to be three years. After this year is over, it's going to be three full years. Like, this guy should be going to trial and facing time, life in prison, and get the case done with and get justice served. And let's move on, man. This is taking fucking too long. Same with Tory Lane's situation. This shit takes way too long. I understand COVID slowed down a lot of things, but... I don't know why they put him, if she's there, in the same... When he can't be around her, like why the, the fuck? baby invite him as a special guest? So, yeah, they shouldn't. Hey have man, him. yeah, like yeah. if I was his manager, or something, dude, you can't go there. Yeah, like, don't go there because you're gonna fuck shit up. You're gonna go back to jail, process. Yeah. But he's, it says here he had no idea that she was there, which makes no sense because hey, come on, she man. performed. Everybody before. fucking knows who's gonna be there. Yeah, exactly. Like ninety five percent of the time. Yeah, they always they always she, let people like know. everybody knows. Like you know, people that set it up know. Yeah, managers and like you know. Yeah. So he just he just yeah you fucking shit up bro. ruined his shit. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, Fifty Cent back in some beef, man. Uh, he's out in Iowa right now. Shout out to Iowa, man. yeah. That's where Shout we're I or to where we're basically from technically. Not Shout out to Hy V grocery store. Yeah, Hy V. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Hy V. Hy V. If you guys don't know, basically in the south, if you're in the south, it's like a Publix. I yeah, what Hy-Vee yeah, is. just like yeah. that. Yeah, it's like a Publix. Yeah, grocery store because we don't have we didn't have Publix in Iowa. So right, it's yeah, Publix South. Thing. Yeah, so if you're in the South, I don't know what for West Coast and all that shit, but for the South, it's like a Publix. It's like a grocery store, essentially. A yeah, small, it's like a smaller small one chain. where yeah. you just quicker go yeah. and grab your stuff. Which you I know? like a lot more. Yeah, so. it's a little bit more expensive, though, sometimes. Yeah, it a is. A lot of times. It is, no, it, it is. is. Yeah, there's yeah. <laughs> Walmart's way cheaper than yeah. Yeah. Publix or Hy-Vee. So. Well, you got to walk more in Walmart. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So Remy Martin um, is looking to sue... 50 cent for the same bottle type of bottle thing, which 50 likes 50 likes beef 50 likes this shit. He's going to now shit on Remy Martin okay. uh, for their drink. Um, this is fun. So yeah, the, let's, let's go over the article. 50 cent has seen plenty of foes over his career. His latest one may be coming for his pockets. 
over one of his popular cognacs. Uh, according to Reuters, Remy Martin filed a lawsuit against 50s Sire Spirits on Friday, August 13th. A legend 50s um, Branson Cognac infringed upon Remy's trade dress and design patent rights in its jewel-shaped glass cognac bottle design. Remy called Sire's similarly shaped bottle a blatant attempt at a trade-off of goodwill associated with an extra old XO cognac. 50 didn't hesitate to respond to the lawsuit on Instagram on Friday, writing, They are afraid of me already. Branson Cognac is the new rave. Remy is number two behind Henny and worried about Branson SMH. I'm just getting started. <laughs> so now he's going to start beef with them. It's going to create more controversy. He actually likes this. Yeah, he's good. But if they fun. win the lawsuit, then he has to change his bottle design. So that is that, that is a, happening. I don't know, man. 50's Who lost. came out with first? Obviously, Remy Martin, man. What kind of question is that? Yeah, Remy Martin's but, been around for so fucking long. I know, but the, the the drink? Yeah, Remy Martin's not the. They're not talking about. They're talking about the bottle design. The no. bottle design of so. F- Remy is Martin's. It, been I, I never seen his bottle, so I don't know what the fuck I'm. You know. I mean, it's right here. Yeah. It's on his Instagram too. If you check it out, it is yeah, almost similar. It's almost really? the same. Yeah. So why the fuck would Fifty do that, man? It looks almost similar, but I I don't think they have a case. They definitely don't have a case. I mean, I don't know. We'll see. But uh, Remy Martin called Sire's similarly shaped bottle a blatant attempt to trade off the Goodwill Associate, which I read. Uh, Remy's XO is the second best-selling XO cognac in the U.S., trailing only Hennessy. According to the complaint, their Centra de Monte cognac bottle design is famous, citing extensive advertising promotion and sales over nearly four decades, 40 years, connection with celebrities and his distinctive look. The complaint also states 50 and Sire Spirits applied for the design patent and federal trademark in 2019 and 2020, covering a similar, similarly diamond-shaped bottle for Branson. The brand launched in 2018, and the complaint stated the company had been using the infringing bottle to sell its version of XO Cognac since 2020. So this is a good thing for 50. 50 loves beef. Now he can just diss Remy Martin, get past them if he actually goes past them. Then he can actually attack Hennessy. I'm sure he's going to figure out a way to go against Hennessy. And if he makes it past Hennessy, then this guy's going to be filthy rich because Hennessy is fucking. I don't even know how much. Hen- oh my god, look, it's starting to remind me of Diddy, him and Diddy. Yeah, I mean it works, man. He, he yeah. talks about in his book that um, that it's it works. He likes doing that. Interesting. So let's see how much Hennessy sells. I'm just curious to see. Oh, they'd probably sell a lot. I don't know. I don't fuck with Henny. I don't drink. Period. Really. So. Hennessy uh, sales for 2020. Probably highest. It's telling me like nine liter cases, around eight, eight million. Like it's not telling me the actual numbers. Tell me how many cases they sold, which is kind of annoying. How much is it? How much is it in money? Dude, they probably got like a billion. Expenditures score soared to about estimated $35 million, about $30 million was better. I don't no, know. It's got to be way more than that. Yeah, this. Yeah, definitely more than that. Where the fuck is it at? I can't see it anywhere. I didn't see brand values at eight point nine billion. Just the brand of it. Yeah. No, that they, they, they. I would have to guess they probably do at least a billion. Oh, they do about five point six billion. Told you, yeah, in the billions for sure. I, I mean, Hennessy's been shit. around so so fucking yeah, long. Yeah, four decades. Like, it's f- no, that's that's not that's Remy Martin. Oh that's shit, right. I'm yeah, sure. their specific bottle. Yeah, um, Hennessy's been around way longer. Yeah, that's around shit for, I don't even know. I don't drink Hennessy, but I know that shit's been around for forever. Let's see. I'm curious. I actually want to see this. I'm really curious. What year were they discovered? Yeah, this is interesting. Let's see. Hennessy, founded in 1765. God. 256 years ago. <laughs> yeah, they, they trillion nails. Yeah, no they wonder it's this nails. fucking much. They're making this much. Mm. Got a Hennessy in my head. <laughs> What's on? This? That's Drake. Oh, oh yeah. One dance. I need a one dance. Got a Hennessy in my head. So yeah, the, they. I don't know. I don't think 50s brands and cognac. That's gonna take a while for it to even get close to number two. Let alone number one. Number one, getting yeah. to Hennessy. Phew. You gotta get. You have to have some of the that best. That would be cognac. a miracle. Yeah, you gotta have the best cognac ever, and everybody has to tell everybody about it. 
pretty literally much. Literally, everybody will have to start fucking with it. Yeah. I mean, this, big, this big liquor store right here sells it. 50 Rancid Cognac. Really? Sell it right here. They must have just brought it. Cause no, that's been there. I remember we've, we've been going. Really? Yeah, I've always pointed out. I'm like, that's 50s. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about that one. The one with the smaller looking yeah, bottle? Yeah, the cognac. Yeah, oh, not the champagne. Yeah, like yeah, Chemin yeah. Dubois. Not that. Oh, I forgot all about that yeah, bottle. That's, oh, that's, shit. Yeah, okay. they sell it right there. Which I don't drink cognac, so. I Damn, I forgot all about that. But yeah, Office High V Run, the one that he just recently stopped to. I don't know what location it was. He did $180,000 worth of bottles just at that signing. Which is, for the people clowning him, saying he goes to high V. Because I remember somebody clowned him like, oh, 50's going to be a high V. He's washed up or some shit like that. I saw some stupid tweet. I would be perfectly fine being washed up making $180,000 at one stop. I'd love to do that. So, How much do you think that bottle is? What? Of the... The Branson it, Cognac? Yeah. It's well, like he, he sold he sold that and he sold the Le Chemin du Bois. So the Le Chemin du Bois, the, the, oh. the cheapest bottle is like $150. So why? What are you trying to do? In no, terms? I'm just trying to see like 180,000 times one. So here's a Branson Cognac. There's the XO. $7 million. So the, yeah. the the XO one, the the one that they're suing um, Remy Martin, that sells for $270. Okay. And then the regular Branson Cognac sells for 70 bucks and then the red and black ones sell for 65 and 54 dollars so the most expensive one is that round one that's getting sued for that one's 270 dollars mm, okay. yeah and then um the Le Chemin du Bois, there's 150 there's 300 and there's a thousand damn there's a lot of money in liquor man yeah fuck yeah there's a lot of money in liquor yeah i mean that's i'm surprised 50 went this route because he went vitamin water first healthy and then Said I wouldn't do liquor. Right I now. mean, he saw probably the money, how big it is. I mean, look at Puffy, man. Yeah. So Rock is... literally became a billionaire. So Rock is huge. Yeah. That shit, everybody I knows. I wonder what the numbers are for Ciroc. This guy, Puffy Juice. <laughs> I like Puffy. Puffy Juice. Juice. So, yeah, I mean, I don't... Obviously, I don't drink like that, but... Yeah, people are making shit ton of money off this shit. I know that for a fact. In bands, what are you looking so for? Ciroc so? recorded volume sales of 1.7 million nine liter cases worldwide 2020. Yeah, they don't give you actual numbers, they give you like how many cases yeah. and shit, which is stupid. Oh, so Ciroc recorded volume sales of 1.7 million nine liter cases, nine liter cases. Yeah, I don't know how to do the math for that. No, you, you can find you out can. Forbes, but. Whatever they did, I'm sure they did like a billion. Yeah, they did. They did. They did definitely a billion. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Damn, that's crazy. Shout out to Meek Mill. Meek Mill becomes the first rapper to receive a Nelson Mandela Humanitarian Award. First rapper. Wow. Meek Millie from Nelson Mandela. Yeah, Humanitarian Award. That's gangster. So let's go over the article. Meek Mill has won multiple awards in his career, including Top Rap Album at the 2016 Billboard Music Awards and Best Mixtape at the 2012 BET Hip Hop Awards. But his latest trophy carries extra special significance. The Philly rapper has been honored with the prestigious Nelson Mandela Foundation Changemaker Humanitarian Award, becoming the first rapper in history to do so. Meek announced his unprecedented achievement on Thursday, August 12th, with an Instagram post showing off his latest addition to his mantelpiece. Blessings, he wrote in the caption. I got the Nelson Mandela Humanitarian Award. Thank you, RIP to the great Nelson Mandela. I ain't grow up playing ball at a Smith and Western because where I'm from, it's very hard to turn 27 survivors. And this is the, this is the caption that Tory Lanez responded to and said, you got the Western part wrong. And then he said, fuck you. I don't fuck with you. <laughs> so <laughs> always some stupid shit, man. <laughs> so shout out to Meek Mill. Um, that's yeah, an award man. that nobody, no rapper has right now. Uh, they, 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 they named him on the reward, like his actual legal name, Robert Williams. Right. I see that. So uh, Robert Meek Mill Williams is what they put in the award. So shout out to Meek Millie, man. That's a dope ass award. Dream chasers. I'm sure other, other rappers will start winning it now. Maybe. Speaking of Meek Mill and the ties of Meek Mill, uh, Drake. <laughs> so Drake posted on his story something that got people really um, talking, let's just say. Uh, he revealed his pick for the greatest rapper alive. I don't know if he's trolling. He just put it in a caption, put it huh? in an image. So, yeah, it's that, that huh? The Officer huh? Ricky, <laughs> William Roberts. What? 
Uh, he put in like, there's a video of Rick Ross and Drake's new artist. And at the bottom, he put, the greatest rapper alive met my favorite rapper alive. Y'all know what it is, man. Right here with family. Big boss right here, gang. We're going down. So what he's saying here is the greatest rapper alive is Rick Ross. And then my favorite, his favorite rapper is his new artist that he signed. Um, so what do you think about the greatest rapper alive? I personally, I have no, I mean, Rick Ross has great music. Nice. I can't deny that. I can't be like, yo, he has garbage music. He can't rap. Nah, he can rap. Uh, he has a great ear for beats. Um, a lot of dope records that like Aston Martin music, hustling. A lot of BMF. the stuff, a lot of the stuff that I, no, no, BMF. Once I found out he's a cop, the music just I stopped. think I'm Big Mitch. Yeah, the music stopped. Being Larry like Hoover. I like So Sophisticated with Meek Mill. So Sophisticated. Um, so that's a dope ass record. Um, oh yeah, that's a good record. Yeah, there's a few records that I like from Rick Ross. Don't get me wrong, he is a great artist, magnificent. You can actually story tell too, which is really good. Great production. I think he's good at collabing with uh, R and B artists too, like John Legend. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if he's there with Chris Brown. Yeah, he's done Chris yeah, Brown Chris records. Brown. Yeah, a lot yeah. of Chris Brown records. Yeah, yeah I like Mariah that. Carey has on there all kinds of shit. So, um, yeah, I the greatest rapper alive. I don't know why Drake would even say that. <laughs> I think he's just he's just a fan showing some love. Yeah. So Rick Ross, hell no, the greatest rapper alive. That's the furthest thing from now. Rick Ross, I understand people are like, yo, he has a great discography, but to be the greatest rapper alive, you gotta have some sort of sales too. You can't just he has no platinum album besides his first one. And his first one only went platinum because of streaming. That's it. What? If it wasn't for streaming being added and people streaming that first one, he wouldn't even have a first album being platinum. He wouldn't have no platinum albums. Both. How do you struggle to sell a million copies of one album? Wingsta. So, and the funny thing is, Rick Ross, right? I like Rick. So when he was beefing with 50, he was like, <laughs> he's like, I'd rather, I'd rather put out 11 albums <laughs> and do a million each. They put out one good album and do 11 million one time. I was like, bro, you didn't even fucking do a platinum not on one album. And you're talking like that. You have to put out, to do 11 million copies, because you only go gold, which is 500,000. You have to put out 20, what, 22 albums to Jeez. match 11 million. So I hate when Rick Ross, and in, in interviews, like, check the scoreboard. I'm like, check bro, what score scoreboard yeah, are you man. talking about? Why are you saying that when you know it's not even true and you're just... It's just funny as yeah, fuck. Man. Stupid, Rick man. Ross is just... I would love... That's what I'm saying. If I ever had him for... be like, what scoreboard, Rick? What are we talking about? Yeah, he, he's just... What? Yeah. Both. I do like that he does like business. He takes care of his yeah, artists, yeah. shit like that. Yeah, he has, he has he, great he's things. He's cool, man. You know, I don't personally hate the guy. You know, I'm just saying like, it's just... It's hilarious how he puts on this image and shit. And it's like, you know, I don't know. How he ever made it out of that 50 cent situation will surprise me forever because because yeah, that like they were clowning like 50 was clowning the shit out of him because he's a police officer he wasn't taking the beef serious because he's like this guy's a cop like why should i take yeah, this that, serious that was that was very and shocking. then he came back with bmf and then 50 was like oh shit so he came back i like that rick yeah 50 admitted he liked the record yeah 50 will never actually hate besides ja rule obviously but 50 has always admitted his enemies like if they make a good record he said that's a good record there's nothing you could say that you know He's not that much of a hater. Just Ja Rule, he'll never admit. So, um, Polo G. This is funny as fuck. <laughs> so, Polo G claims someone stole his debit card to buy OnlyFans content. <laughs> oh, my God. So, uh, no. Polo G was evidently the victim of some fraudulent activity on his Bank of America account this week. But the savvy, or perhaps not so savvy, thief was interested in buying expensive, wasn't interested in buying an expensive watches, jewelry, clothing, or shoes. No, they wanted OnlyFans content. On Wednesday, August 11th, the 22-year-old chart top rapper shared a screenshot of a bank alert that shows someone charged $26.82 to his debit card. <laughs> he wrote across the photo, who the fuck got my debit card? Uh, Apology presumably declined the charges and went about his day. So you know when you, when you charge something on your card, it asks you, do you recognize this? A yeah, fraud. it's like a security alert thing. Yeah, yeah. like when I with, with Chase, if I buy something that's like over 500 or something, they'll actually ask that. Which is, you know, makes sense. But um, yeah, so he, he probably replied no. He's like, what the fuck is going on in my debit card? <laughs> Somebody bought OnlyFans for $26.82. How do they even get his? I mean, you can get people's information online pretty. You got to be very secure about that. So he probably probably just buying shit with the debit card all over. Man, you know what I just found out, man? If somebody steals your debit card in some places when you go, 
like for, for example, when you try to go get gas at a gas station, you just sl- swipe the card. It just asks for zip code. I mean, it's hard to know somebody's zip code. Yeah. But yeah, that's pretty fucking crazy. Yeah. There's no pin. There's no, you know. Yeah. I guess zip code can be like a pin, but. And then one time I, I just scanned it with that, you know, when you tap it yeah. scan, didn't ask nothing. I said, what the fuck? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you can easily steal my. Sh- yeah, that's shit, possible. You know, that's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I, there's a dark web out. Like, if you go on the dark web, the, the hackers, all that shit, scammers, they're getting people's information. Like, it's nothing, man. That's crazy. Because people don't protect their information. You know, it, they really don't. Because I would plug in this this sponsor. I was gonna say their name because they, well, they already they paid me on the the main channel, so I'll say it. It's privacy.com. They do, and this is dope. They sponsor me on two videos. What their website does, and this is a free sponsor for them, <laughs> technically, mm-hmm. but what they do is they'll create a fake card number that's linked to your bank account. But you can put a limit on there. It's a fake card number. So if that gets stolen, it's not a real number. Your real name's not on there. Nothing links to you besides the bank account, but you can put a limit on there. So if you say that card only should spend 50 bucks, that's it. A card gets thrown away. Those numbers get thrown away and never can be used again. So it's fake cards. Okay. Yeah. So it's not your real, real actual debit card. That your name's on there, all your information. It's a fake card, an actual visa with numbers on there, expiration dates, everything. But it's not you directly. So Interesting. Yeah, you can set limits. Pretty dope feature, man. I need to get on this. Yeah, privacy.com is what it's called. I'm actually starting to use it, so... Yeah, because I don't like I don't like my actual debit card being on there, and because shit like this happens, somebody somebody will take it. And I just recently got charged on one of my credit cards thirty dollars. I was getting charged a month. I didn't even realize. Oh, I just had one happen. Lyft last night. I was yeah, Lyft charged. Yeah, Stupid. my Lyft account got charged twenty four dollars. Said, hey, thanks for Lyft ride. Rate me. I was like, what the fuck? I ain't use no <laughs> damn Lyft. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get picked up. I comment. I said I didn't get picked up. Yeah, what the fuck going on? Yeah, I shout got out to Lyft. Weezy F baby, by the way, um, he finally did an interview with Los Angeles Times, LA Times, and they asked him about the the baby situation. And look how much Lil Wayne has matured and has gotten smarter when it comes to interviews, because back then they would kind of trick him with questions, but here he didn't fall for this shit at all. So they asked him about the baby situation. The interviewer asked, "Speaking of which, have you kept up with what the baby said?" He said, "Oh no," and then he said, "The interviewer said." He said some homophobic things and almost every summer, every summer festival dropped him immediately after social media turned on him. Now look at the way Lil Wayne responds to this. He doesn't ask him or respond to what the baby said. He just responds to that social media question. He says, you know how it does. The spotlight on artists and celebrities is absolutely crazy. You don't even have to be a celebrity. Even normal people can feel like they're wrong because their 200 followers said something. But that's the power of social media today. He didn't comment nothing on the baby's homophobic comments at all, which is smart as fuck. Lil Wayne completely dodged that question. You know, like, what do you think of his homophobic comments? Like, yeah. completely dodged it and just talked about how bad social media is. And if you say something, people will attack you immediately. So completely dodged it, which is smart of Lil Wayne to do because oh yeah, Lil well, Wayne's been... Truth, yeah. Like, the whole Pusha T beef started because of a magazine interview. <laughs> that's literally how that whole beef started. So he's smart with the interview. And then he asked them... Um, they asked him about Donald Trump, him meeting with Donald Trump. The interviewer asked, you met with Donald Trump to talk about criminal justice and black business. Was that a complicated decision? Did you feel like progress was actually possible with him? He said, progress is always possible. Then the person followed up and said, did you get a lot of pushback for taking that meeting? He says, nah, not at all. So yeah, he answered the question short and sweet. Short and sweet, yeah. Yeah, and did not um, Good, man. elaborate on anything relating to that, so... Shout out to Lil Wayne. He's learning from his past mistakes. You know, he's an OG now at this point. So, Hell yeah. Uh, Lil Baby. Lil Baby was on MSNBC. He was doing an interview. And obviously an interview about Black Lives Matter, The Trap, Drake, White House, Invitation, all kinds of stuff, right? So the bigger picture, which is a huge record, uh, I think it's one of the best political-type driven records I've ever heard. And it's one of the best for that moment. Like like in the interview, uh, the guy says, what's his name? Archie, I think his name is something like that. I forget his name. But he says, he says um, 
that track was like a moment that's going to be forever in history, that track. That song, it was perfect for that moment. And it wasn't speaking on one situation. It was speaking on everything. And that track went double platinum. Of course, all the proceeds are getting donated every time. So in the interview, the interviewer asked, like, why did you create that record? What was the reason behind it? He says, I wasn't going to make just a George Floyd song, he said. I mentioned what kind of happened in the song a little bit, but it was the whole experience. It wasn't just that incident because it was bigger than the incident. Not saying that the incident was not bigger than other incidents, but it was just my chance to speak on the whole thing. So then he had, they asked him, why don't the interviewer asked, why don't you speak more on political situations and controversial issues? And this is another great way of dodging the question and not really getting any hate with what you're saying. And this is true. This is the way you should honestly approach situations. He says, I don't really catch what's going on or what people are saying. I don't really want to speak on situations, especially when I don't know the whole backstory because something I say might get misinterpreted. So I'm quiet as far as me posting. Which is the right way because if you don't know the whole situation, don't just post don't speak about it. on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's a great way of answering that. And when they asked him about the bigger picture and why it was it wasn't mainly focused on George Floyd, because he said he had friends that were killed by police. Uh, he's been through this experience. He knows George Floyd's like family. Uh, he has inner ties with one of the people that know him. So like he knew the situation firsthand instead of like other celebrities who just heard about it through m news and media. He was actually texting like George Floyd's family and was like really in, in the situation because he knew the people there. And that's why he went to White House with uh, George Floyd's kids and talked about um, various other things. The interview is dope. It's on MSNBC. Uh, it's on YouTube. You just type in Lil Baby on BL BLM, The Trap, Drake, and White House Visitation. Uh, very dope interview. I haven't finished it. I finished about 30 that. minutes out of 37 minutes, and it was a really, really good interview. Uh, shout out to Lil Baby, man. He's got his head on right. He asked about no tattoos. He said for business. Yeah, uh, he said that before. Yeah, yeah, I definitely want to be looked at differently and stuff. So, um, yeah. Uh, he's new the, music. Yeah, he's, he's, the right, he's on the right path, man. Yeah, so shout out to Lil Baby, man. He's going to be killing it. So, new music. Uh, Boldy James and Alchemist dropped Bo Jackson. Project had 14 tracks with one feature, lone feature with Earl Sweatshirt. I didn't get a chance to check that out. Big Crit, I didn't even know he dropped. Um, a Style Not Quite Free. This features 13 tracks with no features. Benny the Butcher dropped Pyrex Picasso. Uh, this is seven tracks, so more like an EP. Uh, it features Rick Hyde, Conway the Machine twice, Al Camino, Rick Hyde again twice, and Al Camino again, so... Really, Conway the Machine, Rick Hyde, and El Camino. Uh, YNW Melly, Just a Matter of Slime. I did check this one out. This is actually the first uh, project I checked out. YNW Melly, even though he's accused of killing uh, two people or whatever, he's very talented as an artist. Very fucking talented. Um, hopefully, he didn't actually do that, and he gets free. They can create music again because he's super talented. Um, the, track has, the project has 12 tracks. Features from Lil Uzi Vert, Gunna, Hot Boy, Kodak Black, Lil Baby, Lil Dirk, Young Thug, Lil TJ, Kevin Gates, Future, and T Grizzly. Wow. So great features. I liked a lot of these tracks. A lot of them were fire. Uh, Mind of Melon, which is the first track of Lil Uzi Vert, was nice. Uh, what's another good track? Far Apart with Kevin Gates, because I'm a Kevin Gates stan. So Freddy Cougar remix with Future and T Grizzly was nice as well. So shout out to YNW Melly, just a matter of slime. The, the artwork is pretty dope too. It's like the the snake, the slime snake, and then the watch. So just a matter of slime. So that means just a matter of time when he gets out. Yeah. That's really what it is. So, And speaking of that, they, they're they actually, he was actually trending on Twitter. People thought he was out when the album dropped. Like they thought he was free and he's not. So wow. he's, he is locked up. So uh, Suicide Boys dropped their project, Long Term Effects of Suffering. Uh, we got 13 tracks on here. No features. Uh, Pierre Bourne and Chavo dropped Chavo's World 2. We got two features on here from Coyla Ray and Babyface Ray. K Camp is back. K Camp. Yeah, I've been seeing him here and there. Yeah, he's got a project called Float, which is 15 tracks. Features from Mooski, Trey Songs, PMB Rock, and True Story G. I haven't checked this out, but shout out to K Camp. And then new music in terms of singles. 
Yeah, Lizzo featuring Cardi B, Rumors, which is the track I was talking about earlier. Sway Lee featuring Jack Harlow, Ball is Life. This is off the NFL Madden soundtrack, which is supposed to feature a lot of artists, even Drake on there. So NFL Madden really put up, you know, okay. the budget for their soundtrack. Um, Wale featuring Maxo, Cream, Yellow Beezy, Down South. I Swear Vezo, Chamber Brothers. Uh, Denzel Curry, The Game. West Side Gun featuring Fabulous, TBA. Uh, D Smoke, Shame on You. And that's really about it for music. We still haven't got Kanye West Donda. We still haven't got Drake Certified Lover Boy. There is no news on Kendrick Lamar releasing. I don't know what the fuck's going on with Kendrick Lamar. Um, wow. Who else are we waiting for on albums? Lupe. Lupe Fiasco. He said his album's going to be as good as Nas's Illmatic, which is too much fucking pressure. I don't know why he said Whoa. that. Why would you mention a classic album like that and say that's as good as that? So we'll wow. keep our eye on that. BMF soundtrack supposed to be coming out in September. So... Hopefully, I'm, Fifty I'm releases forward. a single off that. You know, hopefully, there's a single yeah, that comes man, out. Single, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I would. Yeah. I mean, part of the game. Oh, not for power. Never mind. Yeah, that is. Part. Yeah, so that's a, this is for BMF. So, yeah, what else? What else albums? I think Doctor Dr. Dre hopefully comes out with some shit. Yep. That's what we've Who else? Dre. Um, we already had. Ken, uh, oh, Lloyd Banks supposed to drop his second album. Banks dropping his second album. Yeah, you're right. He did, yeah. He said his second album's coming out. So okay. This first one was just like a warm up. I hope the second one features people and is like more southern, like beats. Yeah, yeah. some more remix. Yeah, yeah like not some, remix, but like features. Yeah, some the south, you know. Yeah, some, like, some like more relevant. But just beats that are more like yeah, not yeah. boom bad, boom bad beats. Yeah. I want like I hope that's that's the way he took. Yeah, because Banks would, would kill it. No, oh, he'd, he'd get a hit record, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, he can get Please a. Please make that happen. Yeah, man. he can get a Beamer Benz and Bentley easily. I'm gonna put a big ass smile on my face. I hope Kevin Gates releases um an album because I'm waiting on that Kaza because he's doing a Kaza tour, so should be gearing up to drop an album. If he's yeah, doing the he Kaza is. tour, which is the album title. I wouldn't be surprised if there's no album comes out. I'll be super surprised. I got tickets for November to go. Yeah, so Kaza. By the way, Lloyd Banks concert canceled. Yeah, so wonderful. We'll keep, we'll keep our eye out on that, but that was fucked up. I think they're doing. I think Banks is Damn. trying to figure out a lot of shit. Maybe the. I don't want to say this. Nah, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> He's probably just trying to figure out a lot of shit. So, right, we'll right. See, yeah, we'll see. We'll keep our eye out on that. Um, yeah. I don't know what else for albums. Anybody that you haven't heard in a while that you're like, man, I would love to hear music from this guy. Mm. Tony Yayo. Yeah. <laughs> Talking New York, Tony Yayo. <laughs> yeah, man. We got Banks dropping. Buck nah, dropping. Straight G unit. <laughs> 50 dropping. Who else? Uh, I was about to say his name. What's the f uh, game? No, no, no. In G when he used to be, uh, Ooh. what was that guy, man? Hot Rod. Hot Rod. <laughs> yeah, why you say Hot Rod? <laughs> no, he just popped up in my head. I don't know why. Yeah. So, so what's 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 your favorite album of this year? This year? Yeah. Oh man, um, I have to remind myself which albums. Oh, you got Migos, Culture 3, you got Lil Durk, Lil Baby, The Voice of the Heroes, you got Lloyd Banks, Course of Inevitable. Um, what else? I'm probably forgetting a lot. The Pop Smoke album, you got Nas, King's Disease 2, Young and Ace, Life of Betrayal, Two Times, um, Polo G, Hall of Fame. Tribute Red's going to release his album next week with great features on there. Pop Smoke was... Uh, J. Cole, The Off Season. Pop Smoke. Um, what else? I'm probably missing a bunch nice. of shit. This Nas album was, I liked it. Yeah, I really fuck with the Nas yeah. album. Uh, the voice, mm -hmm. the Lux voice come out this I'm year. I think of the yeah. Talking about little baby. No, what was this the is, the voice is Dirk's album. That was a pretty good album too. No, I bumped that still, man. That came out oh, technically the end of the end of two thousand. Yeah, December twenty fourth, twenty twenty. I still count that as like twenty twenty one. God, I, hate Deluxe, they, I hate when they drop yeah, albums. Yeah, Deluxe, Deluxe released on January 29, 2021. So I count it as 2021. 2001, yeah. Man. So I, I actually put that up there as, as one of my favorites. Um, I'm trying to think of who else dropped. You the hero, boy, you the hero. Mm. I don't know, mainly Pop Smoke. That's, you like his album? Yeah, his album was nice. Nah, was the second right. one was... Actually, hold up. That was a different year. I'm tripping. Yeah, what are you talking about? I was like, yeah, Pop Smoke, the second one was not that good. I like the Young and Ace Live Betrayal two times, too. I like that album a lot. So, Baby and Dirk, man. Baby and Dirk? Yeah. Yeah. Voice of the Heroes. 
So yeah, hopefully, I don't know if Jay Z's gonna. I think Jay Z's gearing up to drop. Hopefully, a lot of artists drop this year, man. I'm tired of, you know, Kanye and Drake stop being bitches and just drop your albums already. Seriously, they're waiting back and forth. Just so annoying, dude. It's I'm very screaming cool. every night. Kanye, drop yeah. your album. And then I'm Drake, right across him. You see Drake release that photo of him in the studio, like serious face, and then his heart is looking. They, they <laughs> look at this. This is this is fucking hilarious. So the heart that's on his head, or whatever that 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 the barber puts, right? He put it way too low, so it looks like balls on his on his fucking uh, hairline. So somebody drew a penis, like right <laughs> with balls. Oh, like, just somebody fucking. Yeah, oh, somebody like, like scribbled because it looks way too close. Like I think his barber fucked it up. Yeah, that <laughs> heart just does not look like a heart anymore. It looks Terrible. like halfway, just like a ball. So yeah, so shout out to Drake, man. He's certified lover boy. We that's, got anything out for Drake? Like any? Like, no, there's no, oh, this is who's going to be on the album. No release date, no track list, no nothing. Fucking A, man. There's supposed to be a cover artwork, but that's even. Yeah, not even that. No, that's even. Fuck. There was one, but at ter- apparently it's for, like, his Nike shit. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's wow. it for this episode of the Diverse Vitality Podcast, number 74. Um, you guys already know the drill, man. Spotify, Pocket Cast, Deezer, Stream Us, Audio, Video. You know the deal. Um. Yeah. Yeah, man, we appreciate you guys as usual. Always, appreciate you guys always, watching, always. listening. Um, the donations are, you know, we appreciate that as well. Um, everything, man, everything. Just listening, watching. You guys know the drill. Uh, be safe. Um, have a blessed night, day. Whenever you're listening to this, watching this, whatever. And peace yes, out. Take care.